Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going over how to counter Green Gohan, which has been absolutely dominating and destroying this format. Like first and foremost, it's insane to say that a green deck is like the best deck in format and green being the best color alongside that is insane. But a lot of you guys have been requesting a video on how to counter this deck and we're gonna go over that in today's video. So if you guys are new, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell so you never miss a video. And let's jump right on in talking about a little bit of philosophy first. We will talk about specific tech that's good against this deck. But in general, I think that what's good against Gohan are uh, more aggressive decks, especially if you go first, that's always kind of the thing with like aggro on aggro or aggro on mid-range, which you can classify Gohan as like aggressive mid-range in my opinion. But yeah, like if you have a red deck, which red has historically done very, very well against green, it's a little bit different against Gohan specifically because they have a really strong floodgate in the form of Uneasy Wake and Rage. But even with that being said, there are tools that these decks can play that can deal with that floodgate. But yeah, besides that, if you uh, have a really good start as an aggro deck against Gohan, I think you're gonna be doing pretty well. You can put a lot of significant pressure on them sometimes before they have a chance to get into their Z Awakening combo, which is pretty important. But besides that, let's talk about specific tech that's able to actually help you deal with the Gohan matchup. So the first and foremost thing is gonna be cards like Deborah Ritual at Hand or like for green and yellow, they have cards like Gohan Trusted Ally, which is basically a free form of Deborah, but it doesn't cost energy, but it draws you one less card. So it's kind of like a trade off there, but every single deck that wants to can play Deborah Ritual at Hand. And these are just cards that help you supplement the cards that Gohan is making you discard. And these cards are actually quite effective in the matchup because Gohan's not a super traditional hand control deck. It has elements of hand control, but it's not really taking too much out of your hand super quickly, at least by the form of uh, skills and effects. They're taking more out of your hand, honestly, by being super aggressive and putting on a lot of pressure. That's one way they're kind of acting as a hand control deck. But whatever they're taking out of your hand via skills, these cards will help counteract. These cards have been very popular inside Dex's format, and I don't really expect that to change. Now let's talk specifically about their big boss monster, SS Goku and Gohan Father Son Solidarity. This card's an absolute beast. It has insane protection with both deflect and barrier. So it is a little bit difficult to actually interact with this card, the turn that it's played. And on swing, I mean, besides the fact that it's got huge stats at 35K double strike, it pops a guy ignoring barrier, makes you pitch a card and will most likely burn you for a life if the Gohan player is on all engines running. So how are we actually stopping and dealing with this card? Now I got a few examples up here. One that I want to talk about real quick is Shin Noble Supremacy, which technically works against this card. It prevents the card from being able to attack if you have three or less energy, which can be nice if you go second because they're going into their turn four and that's the typical time they'll be able to resolve the full combo with Father Son Solidarity and burn you for a life on top of that. So yeah, Shin can be nice, but any turn past that, or if you go first, Shin is typically going to be kind of useless. So unless Shin is good in other matchups, I think a card that is probably a little bit better is Machikabura, the Broken Seal, because it works against Gohan, uh, Father Son Solidarity, at any point in the game. Unfortunately, you can't use it on back-to-back -back turns, but hopefully the turn it buys you is just what you need to get to like your win condition, or at least like take the advantage back in the game, right? So I wanna talk about those two very generic answers to the card. Now let's talk about some more color specific answers. For black, you have petrification. The one downside of petrification is that it does cost you two cards from hand, but on the upside, it does turn off every single effect of Father Son Solidarity. Petrification is one of the very few cards in the game that actually stops attacking autos. Regular negates do not stop attacking autos from resolving. Petrification does because of the very specific wording the card has. So you're protecting your board. You're still losing two cards from hand, but I mean, that's the price you pay for stopping such a powerful card, and you don't take the burn damage which is super, super nice. Now, yellow actually has a lot of answers to the eight drop, which is uh, a really good thing that yellow is going for it. So there's Mutaito Skill of a Sage, which uh, hasn't seen play in quite some time, but this was yellow's like first real answer to huge boss cards. And what this card does is basically allow the Father Son Solidarity to enter play in rest mode, which again, because of the barrier and deflect, there's not many cards that will allow you to do that. Mutaito is one of those cards. And if Father Son Solidarity can't swing, it's almost like a vanilla at that point your opponent spent two energy on. 
However, the green players can answer Mutaito with cards like Focus Breakthrough and other counterplays that uh, stop Mutaito from resolving. But still, I mean, you're making them have the answer. Maybe they don't have the uh, open energy to pay for that. Or if they do pay for it, you might still be in a decent spot if you like survive the turn. Now they're down in energy in order to defend themselves. They're just exchanges like that that you'll find throughout the games that you play. Another answer yellow has is Vegeta Unison of Fury. There is a niche situation in which your opponent can stop Unison of Fury, and that's if they're able to use their Goku decisions made counterplay, play it, remove markers from it, and then um, you know, you're not able to resolve the minus one there. You can play around that in a few ways. Obviously, they can only use that counterplay under certain conditions, so just make sure they don't have enough uh, you know, Z costs to reduce that thing to one. Or even if they do, you can end up Tyrannical blowing it yourself, or you can just pay three for the Unison of Fury, and uh, I believe the decision made only takes two markers off the card. So that should uh, you know, keep you safe from the decision made counterplay. So watch out for that. Now, as far as other colors go, when it comes to specifically stopping Father Son Solidarity, red doesn't have anything too great. There is Violent Rays, but I mean, if your opponent is smart, they'll just attack with the eight drop first. So Violent Rays is not gonna be super effective there. Blue lost Dirty Burst on the recent ban list. So that's a really big uh, downside when it comes to facing down this card. However, you do have options like Mafuba that'll at least stop your opponent from resolving the burn effect and obviously negating the attack altogether. It can be kind of nice in that regard. In the green mirror, you've got Bigamore, which could be all right, but if any of those specific color answers don't work, you can always fall back on Machikabura the Broken Seal. Honestly, in a green mirror, I'd probably go for Machikabura over a Bigamore, because at least Machikabura has combo power and uh, can be a little bit more versatile in some respects. Now let's talk about dealing with Uneasing Awakened Rage. This card's very hard to deal with because it's a Floodgate that's not a battle card. There are tons of counterplays that stop Floodgate battle cards. This is an extra card that's just super, super strong. So before we talk about cards that specifically answer this, one thing I wanna mention is there are gonna be situations in which your opponent uses Uneasing Awakened Rage where you could still quite possibly go for game and kill them because uh, you know it's only a minus one every single time you attack. So let's say you're at like 10 cards in hand, your opponent's at like five cards in hand. Well, odds are you are outweighing them in combo power needed to win the game on that turn. Obviously, of course, you have to check for like how many super combos both players have been through and other types of things like that that could sway your decision to go for game. But there are going to be situations like that where this card is not going to guarantee your opponent makes it to the next turn. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk about cards that specifically counter this card. So any deck that can play a counter counter like Swift Taliation Cooler, of course, you're going to want to, you know, either main deck or side deck cards like that if it makes sense for your strategy. However, there are two cards that actually uh, have the sole purpose of counter playing one cost extra cards that are activated for free. In red, that's King Vegeta Hidden Ambitions, and in any monocolor deck, as long as your opponent has four or more energy, you can tech Hunt of the Demon God. And by using this card, you're able to negate Uneasing Awakened Rage. Now, the one downside of these cards is your opponent has to use Uneasing Awakened Rage for free. You can't always account for them doing that. However, one thing you can take into consideration is now with the errata to hyperbolic time chamber these gohan decks pretty much have to play monocolor decks meaning they're going to be pretty stuck on energy like green is not a very energy efficient color whatever they're spending on their turn like the energy they'll have for defense is very very telegraphed so if they leave one open that means they have to make the decision whether to use uneasy wake rage for one or leave the one open for the goku decisions made counterplay or any other defensive cards they might be playing that cost one energy. So in that example, if you can bait them into using a Goku decision made counterplay, that means now they're tapped out and they have to use Uneasing Awakened Rage for free if they want to use it at all that turn. Then you can pretty much guarantee that King Vegeta Hidden Ambitions or Hunt of the Demon God is going to be uh, you know live on that turn. On uh, another situation, if you're being very aggressive with Gohan, you're going to force them to tap energy on defense and arrive at a similar endpoint. Or if your opponent gets a little bit greedy and they think they might have game on you on a given turn, they might tap out offensively and then you know, okay, great. Now my King Vegeta Hidden Ambitions is ready to go or my Hunt of the Demon God is ready to go. Next up, there's one more very niche thing I want to talk about. This is not going to be widely applicable in like most games you play against Gohan. However, it is worth mentioning that if you're able to uh, be very passive 
uh, with Gohan and their life total, right? Like, not really attack them much early. Decks like 21 can do this pretty effectively. Decks like, you know, I hate to say it, but Bulma can do this very effectively. That means you're going to put Gohan in a situation where it needs to uh, be able to see and resolve its time chamber cards to awaken uh, itself. So if you're able to counterplay a card like Goku showing adults training, you can actually halt your opponent from ever getting to their awakened side uh, unless they start taking life with the time chamber, which depending on matchup, depending on player knowledge, they might not be doing that. So what are some cards that can actually counterplay Goku showing adults training? Well, in blue Android decks, which of course Gamma is now banned, so there's uh, a lot less of these that can use Android Team Let the Battle Begin so early, but if you can, ever use Android Team Let the Battle Begin early, you can actually counterplay Goku Shonen Jolt's training and ergo turn off Gohan's alternate Awaken condition. Then you have a card like Beerus Ball, which, uh, you know, Goku being a four cost card, there aren't going to be too many counterplays that actually let you stop that for one energy. But Beerus Ball is one of those cards because it actually checks the card's battle power and not the card's cost like most other cards that are like Beerus Ball check for. So again, a very, very niche situation, but if you can counterplay this Goku and stop your opponent from being able to awaken, that's going to give you a huge momentum swing in the game. So that's pretty much going to go over all the super specific points I wanted to talk about when it comes to countering Gohan. If you guys have other tech or other strategies that you like to use when playing against Gohan, please do drop them down in the comments so other players can read and, and learn a little bit from, from the comments of this video. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.